Well, hey friends, welcome to my daily teaching video. Hey, we are in the midst of a series all about freedom. And today we're going to be talking about the freedom, freedom from the fear of death and also freedom from death. Really important teaching. And I encourage you not to bypass that because this is has such an effect on every one of our lives in ways that we're not even aware. And God wants to break that fear in your life and uh, actually completely set you free from fear of death really important thing. Hey, let's do a couple of practicals before we do that. Firstly, if you're on uh, my YouTube channel or wherever you're watching this, please do hit the subscribe button. It should be a red button somewhere down there. Give the bell symbol a long press. That way you get all of our videos and YouTube will let you know about videos coming through. Uh, do check out all the links below as well. I have uh, three churches in New England that we lead here. Uh, traveling ministry, online ministry school, lots of great things going on there. We have an email newsletter we send out once a week. And lastly, let me say as well, if you'd like uh, this teaching as a download, we have actually 12 teachings on the life of freedom together with my notes for this series. If you'd like all of that, it's available on our website for $20 for 12 teachings. Really great deal there. Uh, so there should be a link below or on my website. Avail yourselves of that. Good, let's talk about the, really going to address this as the fear of death. It's interesting, I remember years ago being in Lyon, France, where I used to live, a, a great city, probably the second largest city in France, really great city. And there being once, somebody took me to the Museum of Contemporary Art. Now, I have to confess, I'm not that big into art. Lyon, the city where I live, you know, had a really great Musée des Beaux-Arts, um, like a art museum, the paintings there, you know, Gauguin, Leonardo da Vinci, all these, but modern art, contemporary art doesn't always do it for me. You know, sometimes you'll have like an empty room with a can of Heinz baked beans on the floor in the middle and people come in like, oh, that's really profound and really cool. And I'm usually the kind of guy who goes, yeah, there's a can of beans on the floor. Big deal. I feel a little bit like the emperor's new clothes sometimes with a lot of modern art, but that... That's probably just me, isn't it? And uh, here's my point in saying this. I remember going around this uh, art museum and the uh, Parc de la Tête d'Or in France, and I wasn't particularly impressed. And again, this was the 90s and technology was a little different. And I remember coming to a TV, a large TV screen, and there was a video that played and it lasted about three or four minutes. And, you know, a crowd would stand around it and wander away at the end. And, this, it was a video, this was a collage of just different people talking for about three or four seconds about all of the different fears they had in their life, fear of cats, fear of dogs, fear of driving, fear of fear, 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 fear. And as the video progressed for about two or three minutes, it got faster and faster, fear, 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 fear of this, fear of that, fear of this, fear, 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 fear. And it ended up in about the last five seconds with all of the voices together sort of in a way kind of shouting with all one voice the fear of death and then went blank but like a tony soprano ending kind of thing and uh for some reason it always impressed me and i actually thought it was quite creative because the, the basis of every fear actually comes down to the fear of death and i i think every person actually on planet earth is massively affected by the fear of death in a way that sometimes we're aware of. There have been times in our life, I think probably most of us who, let's say something like fly on an aeroplane, at times have experienced the fear of death. There is just something quite practically, aeroplanes always look really impressive when you're standing there looking at them, this massive piece of machinery. But once you start hurtling down that runway, or at times, I'm never really afraid of flying, you know, taking off, it's landing that always gets me. You know, sometimes you'll be flying and it's peaceful and I mean, noisy in the background whenever, and you realize when you're coming in how fast you're really going. And of course, turbulence and things like that can suddenly make you realize how fragile your life is. You know, I shared an experience earlier in this series where I was in a car wreck when I was about 18, 19, and this car hit a, you know, lost control. I wasn't driving, I'm in the passenger, but at 90 miles an hour, the car just spins and wow. And I, that fear of death, was tangible and real in my life for many years. And I believe though many of us are influenced by the fear of death and we're not even aware of it. And it becomes a little bit like in the way the moon, the gravitational pull of the moon affects the seas and the oceans on planet Earth. 
pulls them in one direction and pulls them in another, which has caused the tides, you know, and the high tide, low tide, all those things that we, at times, you know, probably in ages past, people look, why would the tide do this? Why is it doing that? And there's this pull on our life. At times, places we don't go, things that we don't think about. I think for most of us unconsciously, as we get older, there's this impending doom going on, this sense of like, my life is running out. Imagine like I had one of those old-fashioned timers, you know, the hourglass things with the sand at the top and the thing at the bottom, and we flip it over. I think many of us, especially when we're younger, we start life with that sense of, I got a lot of time, and it's, sure, there's a little bit gone, but there's a lot in reserve. I've got most of my life ahead of me. There's a song the Beatles wrote. I'm probably going to get it wrong, but it says something like, you and I have, it says something like, the roads we've traveled behind us are longer than the roads that lay ahead. Mm. I remember once Steve Jobs sitting down with Bill Gates saying that. In a way, it's sort of like the road of our history is now longer than the road in front of us. Somebody once said, when your memories are greater than your hopes, you're beginning to die. And I think so often we're, we're walking towards death with that sort of sense of impending doom. Now, again, I want to be clear. I'm not talking about the fear of dying of pain or sickness or being in a hospital or, you know, do not resuscitate or all those things. I think there's a legitimate um, conversation about how we do life well as we get older. Maybe we have a little less energy. Um, you know, we're obviously different when we're 85 than when we're 25. Common sense, there is a wisdom conversation there. But I believe God wants us free from that fear of death. And I believe, and don't, don't take this in the wrong way, I believe God wants us to flourish and relish and embrace living for Him here on the earth. But I also believe He wants us looking forward to spending eternity with Him. And it's interesting that so much of the church for so much of history, frankly, life has been rotten, life has been persecution, life has been suffering and pain for so many reasons, sometimes through the enemy, sometimes through the church's silliness, sometimes through lack of knowledge of the Word of God. And so often what the church has done, and rightly so in a way, hasn't expected to experience blessing now. We've looked to the future, frankly, we've longed. You see Paul when he's kind of writing to the Christians and he's saying, um, Man, I'm caught betwixt two. Part of me wants to stay for your benefit because you need teaching and instruction. You need to be raised in the ways of God. But part of me just wants to leave. I wanted to be with Christ, which is far better. I've seen many people who've reached like a season near the end of their life. Sometimes somebody who's been sick. I'm thinking of somebody with cancer right you know, in my past anyway. And it's like they got so near to heaven, they didn't even want to get healed. They're like, I've seen what it's like to be with Jesus. I don't want to go back. You know, I don't even want to get healed. I just want to step into eternity. So here's my challenge to you today before we run out of time. God wants us free from the fear of death. It shouldn't have an influence. There should be this sense where life is amazing now and then I'm going to move into this season of eternity, which is going to be 200 billion times better than anything I can possibly imagine or think of. Hallelujah. So... How do we do that? I think, firstly, we've got to realize, I don't, I don't want to sound weird in the spirit world, like some freaky thing, but spiritually, Jesus took the power of death and he slew it when he died. Yeah, His body was made, his soul, the Bible says his soul was made an offering for sin. His body was made an offering for sickness. By his wounds, we are healed. But his spirit was made an offering for death. He died in the spirit. Yeah, and dying isn't just a physical thing where you stop breathing. He tasted death for all men, the Bible says. And it's like, like with a bee, if you could pull the sting out of it, it would be innocuous. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Jesus slew the power of the grave. He conquered the power of the grave and literally pulled that sting out. And death is innocuous. Death shoots blanks. Death is like a blank gun that cannot hurt you. You cannot die because you've already died. Hallelujah. You've died, Colossians 3 verse 3, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. Only your body is going to die and you're, not, you're never going to taste death because Jesus tasted death for all men. And I want to encourage you to get some of these scriptures. We'll put them in the notes and meditate on them and allow that truth to sink into you. You 
cannot die. You've already died. You've been set free from the fear of death. Now, again, that wouldn't mean if I, I want to, if somebody were to pull a gun on me and, you know, I'm not, firstly, I don't believe God wants me to die then. You know, I have a friend who um, used to be a missionary in Mexico years ago, and he once picked up a hitchhiker in Mexico, and this guy pu pulled a gun on him. And my friend is like, you can't kill me. I'm already dead. And he said, I bind the gun in the name of Jesus. And the guy's getting out. In the end, the guy shot him point blank in the head four or five times. The bullets didn't touch him. Hallelujah. Why? And he led the guy to Christ. Now, I'm not saying that will happen every time. I was once in a situation in India where I'm preaching in a Muslim village to three or 4,000 Muslims. Not that big a crowd, but it, it's big when you're on the stage and people started pushing the stage and shouting at me, row, 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 like it's anger. When three or 4,000 people are shouting and you're the main person, you're the stranger, the foreigner, the white guy in that context, and they're not happy. It's just after 9-11 as well. And I, I literally stood there gripped with fear in this stage thinking, I'm gonna die. I'm going to die. This is it. This is the end. Never going to see my wife, my little baby at the time. I had one child, a few months old, and it's all over. <clears throat> and suddenly in the midst of this, the Lord said to me something which I didn't actually find really helpful at the time. He said, Graham, are you willing to die for me? And I'm literally sitting on the stage. The worship's going on. These people are pushing. And I'm, I began thinking, like, okay, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, part of me was saying, Lord, you know, if, if I have to, make it quick. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, okay. If I have to die in the next 10 minutes, next hour or two for you, I'd rather die than deny you. I, you know, death, it, I don't believe it's so bad in that sense. I will do that if you need to. And when I actually faced the fact that I was willing to physically die for the Lord, the fear of death left me. And suddenly the anointing rose up within me. <clears throat> it actually just rained down on me. And I actually went and grabbed the mic and said, I'm going to pray for the sick now before I even preach. And I challenge these Muslims, you're going to see God do miracles, open blind eyes. You're going to see cripples walk right now. And if you don't, we will leave town. But if you do, you turn to the living God. And I did and God did and they did. Hallelujah. So but here's the really big thing is I got free from the fear of death. I've already died. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah. Ah, oh, there's so much I could say about this. There's a pastor friend of mine in Romania years ago. I think he's gone to be with the Lord now. But um, back, I used to go to Romania a little bit in the early 2000s, probably 2001, 2003, around about then. And uh, there was a pastor in Romania. And once, probably in the 80s, the Soviet Russians, if you're Soviet Union at the time, you know, would capture this pastor and put him in jail and release him, put him in jail because he kept preaching the gospel. And in the end, they threatened him and said, if you don't renounce Christ, close your church, we are going to kill you. And this pastor just laughed and laughed and laughed at the KGB. And they said, why are you laughing? And he said, listen, the, the worst thing you can do the most powerful thing you can do against me is kill me. He said, when you kill me, you, you can't do anything to me. Yeah. But he said, he actually said, the most powerful thing I can do is to die. It's like a Ben Kenobi thing. If you strike me down, I'll become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Now, please, I'm not advocating death, suicide, anything like that. I'm just saying you've already, that pastor grasped it. You can't kill me. Jesus kill that old me on 2,000 years ago. I'm already a brand new creation. God wants us free from that fear. Boom. So again, how do we do this? Um, let me give you two keys that will really help you with this. Get some of those scriptures about what Jesus did, about he tasted death for all men. 1 Corinthians 15 would be a great starter place here. Meditate upon them. Dwell in them. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Think upon them until they really begin to blossom and explode on the inside of you. Lastly, just keep inviting the love of God in. Fear, darkness, if, if this room was filled with darkness, I could bind the spirit of darkness all night long, or I could bring in the light. <laughs> and it's light which dispels darkness, and it's love which pushes out fear. God is love. Perfect love conquered fear. So be filled with God's love and fear will begin to be pushed out in Jesus' name. Thanks for watching, guys. We will be back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about the freedom of the Holy Spirit, one of my favorite themes. Uh, again, if you're interested in uh, downloading all 12 teachings, go to my website, gjm.org. They should be available there on ministryschool.net. Hit that subscribe button if you're on YouTube and check out the links below. 
Love to see you uh, soon in the plan of the Lord.